Episode 13, Child of a Hero. I'm guessing that refers to Thorfinn. Is this Thorfinn? And this looks like an entirely different army. He looks grown as hell. Did we time skip? Did I miss an end credit scene? <laughs> oh, is this a new opening? Like rowing... I don't know what that was. We'll go back to that. Jesus is here to spread love to his followers and death to his enemies. <laughs> yeah! Just give me that Viking feeling. I mean, wow, look at this. The shot of Asklad. He's so pretty. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't know why I'm so pumped for his character, for Canute. Thorical versus Thorfinn incoming. <laughs> Thorical just came out of nowhere and just stole the spotlight of this whole show. It's amazing. Look at them traveling together and then disappearing. This is one of those times where I shouldn't watch the intro. Well, that was short but sweet. Didn't have the, the raw rage that the first one did, but still excellent. I like it on first listen, first watch, and I feel like it captures something really great. It's making me realize how much I've gotten invested in the show and the characters. It's weird to say, and I'm also saying this knowing nothing really about the trajectory of the show or its history or, or whatever, but because it's given me the very distinct feeling that I can be confident in its epicness, I feel like even at this point, you could draw that line and say everything before this was prologue-ish or prologue in a sense, if you know what I mean. Like there's just so many elements that it's building. The things I'm most invested in or most excited about are not the things I would have expected starting the show. Like one of my favorite elements is Thorfinn and Asklad. And so seeing that shot of them seeming kind of in the down and outs and traveling alone in the winter and then vanishing was a pretty impactful shot. And then, I mean, the way this episode started, I may be totally missing something huge, which wouldn't be the first time, but it just seems like a totally different plot line and a totally different Thorfinn returning for his family. That implies some kind of closure to a certain degree, you know, getting sort of unstuck from this pattern of, oh, I hate Asklad, but I, I need him so badly. My de facto daddy and war. Now, that hasn't changed. I don't know a lot about history, but I, I have a feeling that's famous last words when it comes to war. Knut's war is an internal one. And that says it all. <laughs> I like how they made sure to include the giant toothpick. My dear son that I left to die in London after having given him an impossible task knowing he couldn't complete it. I love him so much. Yep. Flip got script. Flip got script. The script got flipped. Thorfinn and Asgard are in exactly the same position that they met in, though now they're on the same side, which is pretty great. But they're missing Thors. It's interesting that Asklad, in his strange way, and sort of non-honorable way, also embodies the, the idea of warriors don't need a sword to fight. A little bit of discrimination here. We can just read the read the room. They just have so much more experience. At least he's honest. I wonder if this is the moment where Canute starts to like Asclad too. He seems better than these people. Asclad knows too. Oh no, pity. <laughs> I mean, I guess recognizing what they want and giving it to them. Maybe they just want to feel seen. <laughs> just want a little recognition. He, w he will? <laughs> Canute's biggest fear. It wasn't London, it's public speaking. For your second line in the whole series. He's sweating so hard it's coming out of his back hair. Asked that is just having a, a great time. <laughs> anyway, Ragnarok is coming, so who cares? <laughs> Save me, Ask Asgar. You're mothering him again. Oh yeah, Ragnar. Asked that just the the father figure that nobody really wanted, but everyone deserves. <laughs> Secretly bringing out greatness in young kids. Now 
No one's ever loved him like I've loved him. Well, I believe it. It's understandable. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's a totally understandable and sympathetic backstory. And what Ragnar is saying is coming from a really good place, and he obviously cares a great deal about Canute. But he's not really protecting him from any of it. I mean, look where they are. He's just kind of dulling Canute's effectiveness. He probably did him a great service by giving him some warmth and love and getting him out of that with some kind of humanity. And I can't pretend to know what it's like to have a child or someone who fills that role in your life and being fully aware of the, the viciousness of the world and wanting them not to have to experience it. And it's tough to find a good balance, but there's a certain line beyond which you're not really protecting them anymore. You're just dulling them. You're just in another extreme where they're totally ineffectual, have no identity, constantly feel insecure and weak and vulnerable. I feel like a big part of a person's destiny is coming face to face with challenges that are unique to the individual and confronting it head on in a truthful manner that isn't hiding from the reality, developing sufficient skills, overcoming it to a degree that feels satisfactory, even if it's not, you know, becoming the king of all kings and it's just, you know, performing adequately, if that's your, your bar, your measure of what it takes to be able to look yourself in the mirror or whatever. And to just get a taste of the fact that one, you're responsible for yourself, sort of, and that two, you can make things happen if you really want to, despite the the dangers, despite the terribleness. And to kind of hide people from that challenge is well-meaning, but it also is kind of unfair because you're robbing them of their life's meaning to a large degree and you're probably making them weaker and more susceptible to danger when you're not around which is inevitable at some point danger and trial is always going to show up at one's doorstep and even if it doesn't you know even if they manage to keep him insulated for his entire life which won't happen he's going to suffer for it somehow good chance that he ends up presenting ragnar at some point as many children end up presenting their well-meaning parents high chance he has no self-worth because he never met himself you know he always had people sort of removing obstacles from him so he never had to do anything doesn't know who he is doesn't believe that he has potential has nothing to really aim for is totally just a victim of the times and what people around him tell him. And also I feel like if we're being really honest in, in these situations, it's not just pure love. I'm not saying this is totally the case for Ragnar, but sometimes there's an element of wanting to be needed and enjoying the role of being a protector, which in a sense deprives people of their full humanity. It doesn't see them as independent agents. But this is not a great time for this sort of bickering or dispute. See, like it would be so satisfying if Knut just steps out of the shadows here. Or doesn't, or whatever. At this point, Askeladd has so many tools up his sleeve, he can just have fun with this. Wow. Very strategic. And because he's above it, he doesn't really care. That's why he's able to do that so effortlessly. There's nothing emotionally wrapped up in it for him. He's just doing his thing. He's connected to the, the Ragnarok, or whatever this higher thinking he has is. This bigger vision of the universe. Oh no. Oh no. But they're not that different though. They're not that different. I and mean, Thorfinn has not been shielded at all, but I don't know, they're kind of at different ends of the same thing. They're both hiding. Right. That's, yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. I bet Thorfinn said that loser in we comment because that's how he feels himself. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like this guy's sort of hubris. He's like bluffing all the way. If you're gonna bluff, he's all really bluff. And now I can take off the mask. <laughs> Let's all just be honest. I'm just doing my job, Asklad. Gold. Viking gold. <laughs> this got so civil so quickly. See, Asklad's standing lower in the shot, but it's great. Because you know where he actually stands. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a real feeling of humility coming from Aslad this episode. Like intentional humility compared to this guy who just doesn't really know his depth right now. That's one way to say it, yeah. He's not normal. It's always more layers to Aslad, it seems. It's as deep as you go. That's a, that's a lot. Wow, very, very good. Because Asklad is a daddy to him too. Asklad is everyone's daddy, turns out. One of Asklad's skills is being able to see what, what drives people, what winds them up, and then being in a position to give it to them. <laughs> I guess uh, Asklad also went bold. 
Well, there goes the one thing that he knew about him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Was that Asclad in the opening? Was that a flashback? This has got real Game of Thrones real fast. I mean, Asclad could end this being a leader in his own right, and he could be a king. That would be something interesting to aim for. That would be, you know, sufficiently big that it would be satisfactory. He's just this king living this, I guess, lowly life on boats? Game of boats. Son of a hero! It's not Thorfinn. Well done. The lost son of a great hero. Wait, are you telling me that Aslad is King Arthur's son? I see what he means by a big claim. Quite the twist. And he returned her to her home. He could unite the kingdoms. That's also why they responded so quickly to his request. This is way more than just money. This is way more than just treasure, Viking gold. This is like world conquest. That's not where his plan ends. No wonder he's so, like, not bothered by the minor details of his life. He's aiming for it all. Damn, Asclad. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with... I'm with, uh, what's his name? Asclad. I, I doubt he even cares about the bloodline thing, really. He just sees himself as who he is, and he knows what he wants, and he'll use whichever one is convenient at any given moment. Case in point, I don't think he hates the Danes. Though he probably sees himself as above the whole thing. Speaking of a true warrior doesn't need a sword. I get it, I'd follow Aslan into battle too. <laughs> Love you too, daddy. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I just happen to eat all their food and travel with them and you know, hang out and do their bidding and love them. This is like the table at the wedding and you just put the misfits. I mean, they, they might have been eating humans in that one scene. <laughs> I think it was the first episode. That you're just so, you were so dumb. You were so dumb. Yeah, this also is just, you know, the opposite of what they're actually feeling, which is raw terror. I knew that was coming. I knew the princess comments were coming eventually. Man, you know you're low when the poor Finn is giving you advice. But I feel like it's a lot of times the people who feel the weakest or the quickest to give that kind of a lecture, you know, kind of scornful admonishment. Asclad said it a whole lot nicer. That's <laughs> through. These are not his words, though, or his thoughts. He hasn't gotten there yet. Yeah, I mean, that felt good. It is an excuse. Something got... Something got triggered. There you go, there you go! That's real, that's real. I guess it really has been a good experience, in, in a way. It's probably just a sign of a lot of things to come. Right there is the ultimate warrior. Warrior with an with an O. In Asclad we trust. I'm seeing Asclad in a whole different light. <laughs> and a new ending. This is the story of Ragnarok. Horseman riding in the sky. I'm loving this journey that they're on. This long march that turns up have ends up having just monumental stakes and just somehow made Asclad into the main character. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's aware. It's very Asclad centric recently. And this shot of Thorkel again, this legendary shot of Thorkel. I feel like at some point Sven is gonna become an enemy. Look at this dude. Thorfinn just ended up in Aslet's gravity, and he's gonna be part of something way bigger than revenge. But will he get pulled into it? Or... Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. 
Or will the words of his father that are definitely in there, stirring around somewhere, end up saving him, keeping his soul intact? This was such an amazing episode. I mean, it's it's so great that it's diplomatic. You know, it's not a war. It's not the action sequence that the cliffhanger sort of suggested. It's just straight up Asclad just owning. And why wouldn't he? It like connects so many dots for me. You know, I've been saying for a while, the way he reacts to things in his daily life, the way he seems to just not be stressed and, you know, kind of let the little things go and have a bigger perspective suggests that there's something way bigger on his radar. And man, is there. I feel like we haven't even seen in its full clarity what that is and what he wants, but it's it's gonna be big. Nothing small for Asclad. And if it doesn't work out, well, I mean, Ragnarok, so who cares? He just feels like one of those characters that's unblocked, unburdened, except by maybe, you know, his own ambition. And no wonder people follow him. He can spare with the things he doesn't see as being valuable. And then you have this interesting contrast between him and Canute, who is just totally helpless hasn't taken one step into the world, cares about everything, and is this prince, but also in a way is this kind of just normal and great story of childhood innocence and one's first steps out into the world. In the speech he gave, it's exactly what you'd expect. He starts off by just saying things that he's been led to believe. You know, it's still the structure of his parents and his household. And it's not him yet, but it's still great because it's him asserting himself. Because I think that's part of a natural first path. You know, you sort of are piloting things. And the first thing you pilot is not really what you're going to end up as. It's just the building blocks you've assembled to have an identity because you need an identity to function. But now you're at least living your identity in the world. And so you have something to play with. You have something to work with and sort of alter based on experience and increase knowledge. And at that point, everything seems impossible and too difficult and challenging and dangerous. And then you start to take on challenges and you do bigger and bigger things and if you challenge yourself big enough you realize that the things you thought were kind of life or death are really insignificant and at that point or from that point on you can kind of navigate them effortlessly it's like climbing rungs of a ladder but with each rung of the ladder you raise the floor if that makes sense with each hard fought victory it ensures you can't fall all the way back to where you started there's there's something and you've built something that is enduring then you also have Thorfinn, who is also a child and is also on the childhood journey, but one of sort of the opposite circumstance where there was no protection. He got thrown into the brutalities of the world way too quickly with no support, except for that one glimmer of hope that was Thor's words to him right before he died. So in a way, it seems like they're on a parallel path with Asclad as kind of this amazing figure leading them. And I guess the, the question for Thorfinn and maybe also Canute is, will they be able to rise to that level that Asclad's at? while also improving on it and having the morality of either the things that came before them that they were lucky enough to experience in small measure or just a better thing that they, they can make themselves. And it just enhances this great dynamic so much, you know, the d dynamic of Asclad being the villain, but also not, you know, he's your, your enemy, but he's also your dad. And the only way you're going to be free, you know, the only way you're going to get anything meaningful out of this is by understanding both, you know, rising to the level of greatness that Asclad is, but then also being what you actually are and doing better than that. <laughs>